Meanwhile, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, has tested positive for COVID-19, his office announced today, adding he would now self-isolate for the next week. Uh, these are pictures we saw of Mr. Macron yesterday when he received Portugal's prime minister, Antonio Costa, at his official residency in Paris. Well, the Elysee Palace issued a statement uh, a short while ago saying that the president had tested positive for COVID-19 today and that he took the test after the onset of the first symptoms. Uh, Mr Macron will now, in accordance with national regulations, self-isolate for seven days, but he will continue to work, the statement says, and carry out his activities remotely. It's a building normally bustling with students and teachers, but this is now a quiet reality for the MHS college and high school. Empty classrooms, students barred from attending, and the school now closed down by the authorities. This part of the 19th arrondissement, an area in the northeast of Paris, is multicultural. Religions and cultures mix freely. The Justice Ministry didn't respond to our request for an interview about why it closed the school here. In a statement, it referred to the fight against Islamism, not respecting Republican principles, as well as the presence of two foreigners working as teachers without authorization. A legislation that appears to target Muslims in France is nothing new. A law 16 years ago banned the wearing of religious symbols at government schools. But the MHS college was one of the few in Paris that allowed headscarves to be worn. China's Chang'e mission has returned to Earth with the first fresh samples of rock and debris from the moon in more than 40 years. Before landing in Mongolia, the capsule is separated from its orbiter and performed a bounce of Earth's atmosphere to reduce its speed before floating to the ground on parachute. Recovery crews had prepared helicopters and off-road vehicles to home in on signals emitted by the lunar spacecraft and located in the darkness shrouding the vast snow-covered regions in China's far north. The newly collected rocks are thought to be billions of years younger than those obtained earlier by the US and former Soviet Union, offering new insights into the history of the moon and other bodies in the solar system. Texas and nine other states sued Google on Wednesday, accusing it of illegally working with Facebook to boost its already dominant online advertising business. This Goliath of a company is using its power to manipulate the market. The antitrust lawsuit was filed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who said in a Facebook video that Google, quote, eliminated its competition and crowned itself the king of online advertising. Google repeatedly used its monopolistic power to control pricing, engage in market collusions to rig auctions, and a tremendous violation of justice. Google called the Texas lawsuit meritless and said, quote, we will strongly defend ourselves from his baseless claims in court. Facebook did not immediately respond to a request for comments. There's been a huge dogfight over this budget since it was proposed and since the, the 750 billion euro recovery fund was proposed as well over this rule of law issue. Now, European parliamentarians have passed it by 548 votes in favour, 81 against with 66 abstentions. It's a pretty overwhelming majority in the European Parliament and is being celebrated by all of the major political groups really, saying that this is a fund that, and a budget that will allow the EU to function properly and will also be able to help pull businesses and citizens out of the economic uh, you know, downturn that has been caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The city who have the high fort and will host 2030 is Doha. Yeah! Another sporting victory for Qatar's capital Doha this time winning the rights to host the 2030 Asian Games, the second biggest multi-sport event after the Olympics.
Doha beating Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh in a vote by the Olympic Council of Asia. Riyadh will host the 2034 edition. The wider context of two regional rivals going head-to-head -head in this vote is hard to ignore. Since 2017, Saudi Arabia, along with Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, has imposed a blockade on Qatar. But for both nations, there is more than political point scoring at play. With Qatar already looking beyond the Football World Cup, it will host in two years' time. The World Health Organization says China has welcomed a team of investigators into the origins of the coronavirus expected to arrive there early next year. A WHO official said Thursday that the organization was in talks with Beijing. It's been nearly a year since China reported the first cases of pneumonia from an unknown cause in Wuhan to the WHO and closed a market where the novel coronavirus is believed to have emerged. The United States has accused China of hiding the outbreak's extent and has demanded for a transparent investigation. It's also criticised the WHO for allowing Chinese scientists to do the first phase of preliminary research into the virus. New Zealand announced on Thursday it secured enough COVID-19 vaccines for its entire population of 5 million and will begin a free mass immunisation programme from the middle of next year. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said two new deals have been signed with AstraZeneca and Novavax. She said the government plans to vaccinate border staff and health workers from April, widening it out to the general population in the second half of the year. Some of the vaccines will also be sent to countries in the Pacific. Never before has the entire globe sought to vaccinate the entire population at the same time. Ours will be a sustained rollout over months, not weeks, but our pre-purchase agreements means New Zealand is well positioned to get on with it as soon as it is proven safe to do so. It marks the end of a good year for Arden, who's been widely praised for her handling of the pandemic. When it comes to cracking down on illegal weapons, you wouldn't think slingshots would be high on the agenda. But there is one that has police concerned. These toys are not toys, they are weapons, they are prohibited weapons, and they are dangerous. It's called the Doomsday Slingshot Crossbow. Pump action, shooting 40 ball bearings or a bolt that can go through metal. The potential injury is fatal. So. You don't want these particular devices to be put in the wrong hands of anyone. They're sold online, targeting Australians with free shipping. Reviews show they're arriving across the country, sent in separate shipments to try to avoid detection. If you've ordered a, you know, a prohibited weapon online, you know, the chances are we're going to find it. And coming into Christmas, Border Force is seizing more weapons like this. So if they go ahead and order them, they're going to lose their, their item, they're going to lose their money, and in some instances they might end up facing prosecution with some serious fines or even imprisonment. It's an annual event, eagerly anticipated across South Korea, held around Buddha's birthday. Tracing its origins back more than a thousand years, the festival symbolizes the enlightenment of minds through Buddha's wisdom. But coming in spring, it is also a celebration of life that all Koreans can share in. This year's event was scaled back because of the pandemic. Normally large crowds gather to see the illuminated floats that often reflect current events. Recent improvements in inter-Korean relations that led to joint Olympic teams and the possibility of re-establishing rail services between North and South were celebrated last year. Two years ago, South Korea's Buddhist temples were recognized by UNESCO for their contribution to the heritage of humanity, further cementing Buddhism's role in the fabric of South Korean society.